All right, so I've posted my refined sketch. And I have my refined sketch in my assignment four folder. This is the first thing that gets submitted. It's the first requirement. And it was actually not this one. It's this one. So once you have that, I just have it as a PNG. It's not high resolution. You know, it's pretty chunky. But it shows me clearly where the shapes are, the space in between the shapes. Remember, it's just one color. So this is what we call a black shape vector. I am now going to go to the assignment. So it's just there. And where in the directions it says vector program. Vector.com, we can click on that. We can always just go to vectr.com. Excellent. Oh, I'm so glad this link still works. Good, because they've made it a lot harder to find their tutorials. So. Vector.com is freeware. Of course, all freeware has to try to make money. But luckily, so far, at least, they don't make money through charging you for an account. But they do require that you sign in with an email. The benefit of that is that when you sign in with your email, it will remember your past work. But what they're really trying to make money on is their AI features, right? Like all of these sites right now, these image generators. And of course, we are learning how not to use image generators to actually kind of control what we need to do for ourselves and for our clients. So we, we skip right over that and you can go to my designs to see the things you've been working on. And we're going to start your first file now. You could say new artwork, but better because you're opening not a vector program, a vector file, you're opening a raster file. This is how you open those kind of files. So we're going to open your, I have to find my assignment four from my desktop. Here we go. And then my preferred PNG. So when you open that, it opens. You don't even need to worry about the pixel resolution. It has one, but that's only because when it, brings in an image, it also brings in the pixels with the image. So basically the pixels of your image define what the pixel resolution is of your screen. And when you click on this layers icon, you will see that you've brought in an image, not a vector path. Go ahead and select it. This is how you can select through your different paths just like layers in Photoshop or in Photopea. So click on that and you'll have your properties for that layer. I have my, my ad blockers on, so you'll see that that column is blank. And I hope that doesn't mess with the free functionality, just like Photopea. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the opacity, these are the, the attributes to that layer, and I'm gonna onion skin my image by taking it down quite a bit, probably to about 40% 40, 40, uh, percent opacity. Look at some of these other properties. Fills, border, shadow. None of these are going to apply to raster images. Those are things that can apply to your vectors. The next step is to start making vectors on top, tracing over, just like I have here. Where is it? Where is it? Right here. This is doing it in Illustrator. Now we're going to be doing it in vector.com, right? So how do I do it? Well, the easiest way that is most familiar is like what we did with exercise two. You'll see vector shape tools and a lot of them. You want the basic, basic ones. You definitely don't want the two colored ones, okay? Because we're doing a one color logo. So I have this tail. That's a pretty simple shape. Why don't I start with that? And I can use not just a square or rectangle, but a rounded square or rectangle. And I can plot that. Now, that doesn't look much like my tail, but it's really easy to then transform it into something that looks a little bit more like my tail. Now, why did I start with the shape tools? Why am I teaching you that first? Then if we close that and we double click on it, you're going to see all of the vector properties. 
You can also see it under layers. We now have our first path. Oh, the other thing I want you to do to your image is to lock it with that little padlock. And we can turn it off at any time to see what our vectors are looking like on their own, but it won't delete it. That's with the eyeball. Okay, now we have our path. And with our vector path, when we zoom in on it, Command plus, same as Photo P, you can see on the properties, we have a color, fill, and it's, it's kind of ironic that these are our campus colors that it just populated with, but it's filled with blue. And then you also have the option to check on a border. And this border is bright green. And then you can play with the thickness of it. In Illustrator, these are called your fill and your stroke. In Vector, they're called your fill and your border. All I want you to do is always turn off your borders. And it should catch on pretty quickly that you're just not using those. So just uncheck your border and then your color, you can just click on the color just like you did with your vector shapes in Photo-P, and just click, click on the, the black that's right in the, uh, the default options, because that will be 100% black. Okay, so now we have a black shape with no border. Don't worry about drop shadows yet. Okay. Next, if I double click on it, I will see the anchor points. Now, this is a kind of a tricky shape. I probably should have started with a slightly simpler shape, because this is a rectangle, but it has what's called corners that can be individually manipulated. So the corners are those kind of empty circles, the cornering tool. And instead of trying to make that work, let me just push all of those out to points. Oops, if I do it too far. Come on, there we go. So now you can see I have two that are soft, which I want to keep, and two that are sharp. Now, if I hover over these individual, double click, and click on these individual anchor points, I can move them around. But because this was a simple four-sided shape, I only have four anchor points to play with. So how can I add more anchor points? If you hold down spacebar and then drag, you can move around your image. So double click on it so you see your anchors. All I have to do is click on it and then drag to create more anchor points. And it's almost like folding origami. I can find the shape I want. I can also move those anchor points. And whenever I need to, I can add another one. So this is a really good way to start out if you're new to vector programs, is to design everything with straights. Because remember, a vector, a vector program uses anchors, these squares, these white squares, and then it plots a mathematical algorithm between the vector points. So all the computer is remembering is where these anchors are and then whether it's a straight or a curve that's coming out of them. So if you start all with straights, you can kind of build up shapes in an interesting way, even if they're really curvy shapes. Whoops. My designs, let's see if it remembered. Darn it. <laughs> Darn it. There we go. Okay, good. I'm getting uh, messed up by my, my trackpad and my double my double finger tracking. All right, so now let me see if I can do that same thing with the wing, but instead of trying to turn that from a simple shape and then adding anchor points, there's the tool that's the pen tool. This is the most common tool in any vector program. This allows you to plot anchor points as you go. Okay, I'm gonna start here. I'll zoom in a little, Command plus, and then what you got to get used to, I'll show you over here. If I wanted to make a square, I would just click, lift, move, click, lift, move, click, lift, move. And then I have to end it where I started it to have a closed path, even though it's not quite square. And then I would check its properties. I want to fill it with a color. I want that color to be black. And I want no border on it. 
And then when I double click it, I can see those corners, just like I saw with the, the rectangle tool when I used it. And I can use the corners to round them out. So that's how you use the pen tool. It's about clicking and moving, not clicking and dragging. Okay. So when I use the pen tool and I want all straights, I'm just going to click and move. Click and move, click and move, click and move, like dodge and weave. And the better you get with it, the fewer you have to plot. But when you're just starting out, maybe plot whenever you think you need to. Drawing it all with straights. And it's nice because the default is to give you a black border on an empty fill which helps you trace your sketch very clearly. But all with straights. Now, if you have a lot of familiarity with vector programs, you can go right into plotting curves whenever you want to. But I'm teaching you it this way because it will minimize a lot of frustration at learning the tool to start with straights right so now what do i do i fill it with black and i turn off the outline then i can do it with this one too but before now i'm going to show you how you turn these into curves so I know I want the tail to be curvy. First of all, how can I tell where I want my curves? Well, I can go to the opacity options and I can take it down so I can see my sketch underneath it. So now I can see my anchors clearly and I can see my sketch underneath. And I can see, oh, there's a curve I want here that I wasn't even remembering. So I'm going to add an anchor point there for straight. Now, one way you can add curves is to use these cornering tools. And that will turn things into curves. And sometimes it works great. Because what's nice about these cornering tools is they limit each other. So it won't allow you to corner into another corner. So you'll never get like double curves. So if I just round out all of these curves, that's why the tool is here. Maybe that will give me the tail I want. Let's see. And often, it won't be exactly what you sketched, but it will be visibly cleaner than what you sketched. And arguably, maybe even better than what you sketched. All right, so I think I've played with all the curves. So now let's take the opacity back up. Let's click off of it. And now let's look at my layers and turn off that. So you can see it's kind of curvy, kind of wonky, but it works. That's actually not technically plotting any curves. That was just turning fixed anchor points into rounded anchor points. I'm going to do Command-Z, 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 Control-Z on a PC. And now I'm going to do it again the proper way where I can control every curve. So I double click on it to see my anchor points. And then what I do is I'm going to click let's see Let me remember how to do this in this program. There it is. Okay. Forgetting what hotkey it was. So now to change, let me get that one in. To change a straight into a curve, what you do is you double click on the anchor point. So if I want this to be a curve, instead of cornering it by pulling on the circle, I double click on the square. 
Now that's a curve. What's great about a curve is it gives me these what are called Bezier handles. 